Whatever you do, don't lose focus. Stay focused. Stay focused. Keep your eye. How everybody doing tonight? Well, I uh, reintroduce myself, Jahan Smith. Anybody that knows me locally knows me as Joey. Or stage name Joey Crack with two Ks. And uh, tonight, I come to speak on the influence of hip hop. Well, the wave of hip hop. And I chose the word the wave because I'm going to use it as an acronym. Words are vibrant energy. And I chose hip hop specifically because I'm a rap artist. And we know that people listen to music either to set the mood or according to the mood that they're in. And today, we know that hip hop is setting the tune for a lot of people because it's the number one genre in the world. And the way I look at it, we got two different types of people. You got people who are initiated with hip hop. You got people who are associated with hip hop. Now I'm just gonna speak on the people that are associated. The ones that are associated are the people who just brush by it when they, they hear a younger sibling or a sibling in the house listening to it, or a coworker that they talking to over lunch or something. Them people that's associated probably say that it's degrading, disrespectful, violent. Me, honestly, if today was the first time I heard rap music, today's rap music, I probably would have the same perception. But I was fortunate enough, I grew up in what they call the golden era of rap. And I say the golden era is because back in the mid 90s, early 2000s, had the same impact, but not as much as technology. We didn't have the streaming services and stuff now. It's much more accessible now today. And the foundation of it is it's, it's all words. It's all wordplay. And those people that are associated, like I said, you probably say it's negative, but they don't understand it. I fell in love with hip hop when I was like nine or 10 years old. My mom had uh, got me a Jay-Z album. And I'll never forget, my first rap album I ever had got. It was his fifth recorded studio album, The Dynasty. And I remember vividly, on that album, it was a song called, uh, Where You Been? And in this song, he was metaphorically speaking about his father. And I remember the first lines that came out this song was, uh, I wanted to walk just like you. I wanted to talk just like you. Often mama said, I look too much and I thought just like you. I wanted to sip liquor and smoke Newports just like you. Look at me now, in and out of court just like you. And just thinking to myself, like, nine, 10 years old, you know anything about anything this dude's talking about. As a whole, his music, I didn't understand, but I could take words and context clues around those words that he was talking and put it together and get an understanding for myself. And like I said, I grew up in a golden era where we watched a lot of these artists most times come from being products of their environment, literally taking the dirt that they come from and building up labels, brands, and going internationally with it. And it was, to me, it was amazing. Like Watching that type of stuff really, really got me going. And just to mention a few, we had groups like uh, Bad Boy, Death Row Records, uh, The Refugees, and most importantly to me, Jay-Z and Rockefeller Records. Most people today probably know who Jay-Z is. Entrepreneur, artist, business mogul. And I find Jay-Z fascinating while I became infatuated with Jay-Z fashion be much more before I did musically. When Jay-Z first started out, he represented this clothing line called Iceberg. And to me, it was very appealing because Iceberg used their logos and their mascot were Looney Tune characters. Very appealing to children. Long story short, Jay-Z tried to do a partnership with Iceberg and they turned him down. They said he, he, he wasn't appealing, whatever that meant. 
So obviously they were wrong. Ended up doing his own thing. He started a brand called Rockaware and ended up selling it later on in his career for anywhere between 208, 210 million. And like I said, those groups I named, to me, they stood out. Like, to me, in my head, they played out as like historic figures, like political figures, like empires and tribes. It was crazy how I imagined it and how I still do. And Jay-Z stuck out like a sore thumb. All due to, one, his body of work being the very first hearing as a child. And I can relate to it. And as I started to fall in love with him musically, I started to understand what his music was about. And as I started to understand what his music was about, I started to see and put pieces together. Like, hold up. This is more than just music. This dude's is, this is literature. This is poetry. This, these dudes are talking to my soul. So I start digging deeper. I start getting into literature. And I got into literature and I found out that rap is nothing more than the acronym itself, which stands for Rhythmic African Poetry. And as you can see today, if you listen to today's music, you'll see they lost a lot of that substance. And honestly, to me, rap, once again, is much more than rap. It's much more than a culture. To me, it's a civilization. Hip hop is a civilization. Rap is just one of the subcultures within that civilization. Once I started getting into literature and I found that out, I'm like, hold on. All these things are forms of expressions of art and cultures that make up this one civilization. So I start understanding that rap was more than just rap, it was literature. And I started looking into the words, I'm like, hold on, literature? I start to see. Do my history, get on Google, even if you get on your phone and get a little they'll tell you that hip hop and rap started in the late 1960s. Started out as an art expression, which we call graffiti. And it started not too long from where we stand right now. It was a dude that went by the name of Cornbread, real name Daryl McCray. Much of the older people here probably know the movie Cornbread Early Me. Yeah, that was based off Daryl McCray. Daryl McCray was a man from North Philadelphia, grew up without his parents. His grandmom raised him. His grandmom died. He had to find a way to express himself rather than being in the streets, being violent, selling drugs. So he picked up a can of spray paint, and just started tagging stuff in Philly. Well, one day he was on the train, he read an article pronounced him dead. To dead, I ain't dead, I'm well and alive. So what he did was he kept running around Philly, started tagging, and what he started tagging was cornbread lives on, on walls and everything. These people thought he was posing. Like, nah, he dead, that ain't him. So he went to the Philadelphia Zoo. He spied out for three days. He watched the trainers clean these elephants, put them away, until he realized that these elephants were tamed animals. He said, you know what? He jumped the fence later one night, took some red spray paint, and spray painted on the elephant. Cornbread lives on. And that's what we get graffiti from. So I did some deeper research. I'm like, it, it got to be more than this. So a lot of people who are like religious and spiritual probably can vouch. You open up your book and tell you, first thing was the word. These dudes, these people were taking different forms of art and expression and putting them together. And these were subcultures of a high civilization. And being as though the first thing is the word, archaeologists refers to tablets and the oldest forms of writing, which is the hieroglyphs back in Africa, rhythmic African poetry, as graffito. And anybody that's good with like linguistics and literature, you understand that vowels are interchangeable. So in graffiti, if we take that last I and change it to an O, we get graffito. It's the same thing. These people aren't doing nothing but telling their stories, and their stories and their history is verbal much more than it is written down. It's passed down through language and stuff. And I start putting this all together. I start understanding, like, yeah, this is much more than just what they call a culture. 
it's literally a civilization. You have these things, okay, for instance, graffiti is an international thing now. You have artists like dudes by the name of Banksy who sell graffiti art for a million dollars or more. We have business models like Jay-Z who started with just nothing but expressing his words, expressing himself, getting his story across. And you start to see that these are all subcultures of a civilization. The same way air, water, fire, and earth is to form a civilization, you got DJs, MCs, break dancers, graffiti artists, all subcultures that form a civilization. And often they speak of lost civilizations and lost tribes. Me, quite, I, I don't believe it, because what I see in plain sight, I see a high civilization of people continuously moving forward. And just by the study, studying Jay-Z, like I heard him once say, us as artists, we are nothing but whistles. The wind blows through us, we make those sounds and gravitate towards different people. He also said that the first poet, the first prophets were poets and musicians, which is very true because even if you look in your Bible, whatever it is that you look into, those are poets. These are poems and stanzas. That's all it is. First thing was the word. And the great Maya Angelou once said, words are a thing, guard them as such. Hip hop is a thing. So hip hoppers guard it as such. And you just, you gotta, you gotta be careful what you say. Think about what you're gonna say. Because the mind is not a joke, what you think you pull your way. What you think creates your space, what you think what makes you safe. I'm thinking real hard bars over heavy 808s. Talking real hard bars, get me in the heaven gates. Heavy flow, levy broke. Kick it in like Kevin Gates. Somehow, some way, I find my way and not escape. Somehow, someday, my parents will see better days. I promise to levitate above all the nonsense, the subconscious of reality that make the conscious unresponsive. Down on my luck, so stuck in my ways, trying to balance my lows, getting by for days, at eyes with my girl, at eyes with the world, at eyes with my peers because they think parallel. Take a look in my eyes, it's a story they tell. Scripts is out of a book, cast it under a spell. My afterlife must be heaven because I'm going through hell. They praying on my downfall, but I be wishing them well. I ain't looking for help, on a mission for self. You find that will need no one else. And I say that to say this, that me, no college education, no post high school education, I'm just an artist. And just so happened, obviously what I'm talking about, what I'm speaking brought me here center in front of all yous. I just say that, like, we take, hip hop is nothing but us taking our experiences of what we know and trying to make the best of it. It's a high civilization, that's all. Thank you.